Social Media Week is organized by Pinch Social. And Social Media Week is actually independently organized. So we're part of this amazing global family of Social Media Week events that happen all around the world. Hi everyone, I'm Melissa. Welcome back to Out There. Michelle, the sign says it all. It is Social Media, not day, but week. It's a whole week. It's a whole week that you've organized. It's insane. We had to come down here because the madness. <laughs> Congratulations on this. You. you know, you've had to turn some people away. That's just how many people showed up for this. And lucky for us, we had a badge to get in here. Any so, time. so much to talk about. Let's talk about the importance of this event for everyone. Yeah, absolutely. So Social Media Week touches so many aspects, or sorry, I should say social media touches so many aspects of our lives. And Social Media Week is something that happens around the world in different cities, different times of year. Here in Toronto, it's Social Media Week right now. And it is a full week because we have a jam-packed program, uh, 30 plus sessions, over 70 speakers, all the major platforms, brands, influencers. And this is really the only Social Media Week in Canada. It's the only forum uh, in Toronto that's exclusive for social media marketing and it's the only opportunity for all of us to get together and talk about it. And what I love about it is it's very digestible information so that it's for like every user out there no matter you know where you are in the realm of you know understanding social media and sort of diving in or being a real expert at it. Who would have thought this is like our, our big form of communication nowadays, right? It's crazy because you're in the world of PR and there was the old school way of doing things, but now this is where everyone gets to tell their stories. What are some of the trends that you've seen that we're going to be stepping into in 2020? Absolutely. So influencer marketing is here to stay. It's bigger than ever, but I think social media has really cleaned up its act over the last year, I think. For a while, people were getting tired of seeing, you know, some of the shady influencer practices, fake followers, fake likes, overly staged photos. So things are getting more real. Influencers are more authentic. People are showing off their stretch marks. Uh, Dante Colley, for example, Toronto is out there telling everybody how fabulous they are and just keep doing their thing. Um, you know, we used to think of influencers being a certain way. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we had Nav Superfan Batty oh, on stage. Like he's, he's Biggest awesome. influencer in Toronto. Uh, he came out with his giant uh, <laughs> championship NBA ring that he got as an honorary Ma Raptor member. And he really, he came out and said, this is for you guys, this is for the fans. And then we had hundreds of people lined up in the lounge all trying the diamond <laughs> ring on. Um, but it just, you know, who would have thought that an influencer in today's world would be a middle-aged Sikh man? But here we are, and I think it just speaks to the diversity of Canada and, and Toronto. Just talk about some aspects of your social media, okay? Yes. Favorite emoji? Oh, my favorite emoji is the, um, okay, I have a funny story. So my favorite emoji is the, the cry laugh. <laughs> right. um, I always use it. But true story, um, I love to point at something. Like, mm. I'll post a photo and then I'll use the pointing emoji and mm -hmm. say, you know, I'll text my team or I'll text clients and any thoughts on this. So my team just shared with me that for the past several months, I've been using the middle finger emoji right. <laughs> instead of the pointing emoji. <laughs> and I've been doing that with like on my family group chat. Yes. <laughs> I've been posting like pictures of babies and my dog with like the middle finger. <laughs> like, hey everyone. <laughs> so um, you could say that that's my favorite emoji. I, yeah. But even as a social media expert, you know what? That can happen. So I, there what? needs to be an emoji dictionary. All right, that's great. Well, listen, congratulations on this and continued success. I think it's really a much needed event. And I also understand this is available online for people to kind of see some of the some of the stuff. That you we will be pro we will be providing some of the sessions Yay. on YouTube. So look out for that and uh, definitely come to the next show. Okay. Seeing it in person is a whole other thing. It's crazy incredible. And uh, I'm so glad you were able to make us. I got the finger from you as well. And I was just kind of wondering what that meant. <laughs> but I guess it, it Okay, I was just wondering. Wrong finger. <laughs> Wrong finger. <laughs> All right, thank you. That was great. Great job. Awesome. Thank you. Okay, so there are three big franchise leagues. Yes. And your company <laughs> is like insane. Yeah, yeah, we got in. Uh, 
you got in early. Actually, we're, you got in early we're now for number all two, three. but we uh, we were the the first uh, company globally to get into each of those top three franchises. Congratulations, yeah. Mike. This is incredible, and to have you here, part of Social Media Week, is just the the, the right decision, really, because esports is huge. <laughs> <laughs> and what I thought was interesting about your presentation is you let us know that there are some myths. That about esports, and maybe we can talk a bit about some of the things that yeah, you know sure. we think, or you know, we don't really understand it. Yeah, uh, I mean, the big one is um, people tend to stereotype esports fans. Um, they say that um, you know they are these uh, isolated gamers that play in their basement. Like that's the general stereotype. Mm. And what we found is that um, actually um, they're 40% women. Um, there are 60% of new Canadians are esports fans. Um, parents uh, are starting to go to esports matches with their kids. Um, so actually, it's not it's not that stereotype that you'd like to just put in a box and say like these are who esports people are. Right. Well, esports is is a very accessible choice. Yeah, we found uh, locally um, like four in ten Gen Z and millennials would say that esports is built for them. Mm -hmm. um, and um, when they go to these live events and they they follow these players, um, they're fascinated by them. But part of it is exactly that is that um, they see themselves actually one day maybe being able to be a professional esports fan. Right. Um, you don't have to be built with you know broad shoulders and six feet tall to, to get into eSports. So um, today there is an element of, um, of accessibility that you just don't get from a lot of sports. So, so let's talk about you a little bit. You come from you know Google background. What made you kind of take this direction? Yeah, so, um, so when I worked with Google, I worked a lot uh, on the YouTube side of the business. Um, the biggest uh, content category on YouTube is gaming. So mm -hmm. gaming is uh, a, a, a type of content stream that you just you can't avoid, I find, these days. Uh, and it really spiked my interest. Um, Esports is something that I've continued to see grow. Uh, and um, for me, um, I just I saw the opportunity ahead of ourselves, uh, over active media um, from a, a business plan perspective mm. and getting ahead of these franchise-based yeah. leagues. Um, just seemed to have a great plan in place. Um, so it was, uh, yeah, uh, a, a big jump, but uh, but an uh, exciting one. So uh, interesting on how how do you guys you know pick your pick your teams, pick your players? How, where do you find them? Uh, yeah, so I mean the the scouting network to find the best players mm -hmm. is um, is a difficult uh, nut to crack. Uh, we've got a, a performance division and department that oh. is sole purpose is going and and looking online and looking for the best uh, around the world and seeing how they rise to the top and just and following those mm -hmm. those athletes and and helping them grow because uh, a lot of the time they are. Um, they are young, just like like any other sport mm -hmm. out there. You just have a natural talent, just like any other sport and other athletes, right? <laughs> yeah, there you go. And you have scouters going out finding them. But I think what's interesting is is that a part of honing those skills and supporting them, you guys make sure you have like a fitness, nutrition, um, yeah. you know, taking care of their mental health, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, our uh, our Overwatch team lived actually together this past year mm. in a, a house in LA, and they had. Uh, a nutritionist and chef and uh, exercise routine and so um, again the, there's a regiment that's that's there and built that is uh, more sophisticated than probably most uh, most we've met. Mike, uh, listen, congratulations on your success. Uh, we're looking forward to the new announcements for 2020 and thanks for being on the show. Great, thank you. <laughs> thanks for having us. Okay, great. Thanks. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Thanks. thanks. <laughs>